Welcome back to ESPNW Presents the Trifecta on ESPN Radio. Sarah Spain and Kate Fagan with you as always. Darcy Main from ESPNW with us all day today. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests join us via the Shell Penzo Performance Line, which is where we will head now to talk to the NFL's first female scout who has written a new book titled X's and O's Don't Mean I Love You, the untold story of the NFL's first female scout, available on Amazon, Kindle, iBooks, and Nook. Thanks for making time for us, Connie. It's Connie Carberg. It's my pleasure. Hello to Sarah, Kate, and Derek Darcy. How are you all today? Good, thanks. Um, So let's start with a little bit of your story. Actually, a colleague of ours, former Trifecta co-host Jane McManus, wrote about you for ESPNW back in 2012. And, you know, you were at at college at Ohio State, and you got to go to practices with Coach Woody Hayes, who took a liking to you. When you graduated, Jets coach Charlie Winter asked if you would be the team secretary. And as the secretary, you would take home game tapes and write up reports just because you wanted to, you were interested. And when they were looking for a scout, they said, well, why don't we give her a shot? She's already in-house, and her reports are pretty good. Uh, was there any trepidation on your part in taking that offer, uh, seeing as you hadn't necessarily intended to enter enter the, the world of NFL scouting? Yeah, you know, it's fine. When I when I ever since I was in high school, I did my own mock drafts, and even though there was only you know one game on a week with the wonderful Keith Jackson, and there was just Street and Smith magazine and stuff, but I I started doing my own mock drafts. Not always successful. I mean, I hit on Ron Yarry and I failed on Garrett Ford and a few other things like that. And my just doing thing. So as I said, I was doing that, and then all through my college years. So as I said, it be, really became a, a part of me, um, just always doing the draft and um, thinking that. This is, as I said, basically what a lot of females did, not knowing that very few did it. Um, When I came out and went to work for the Jets, I really didn't have any secretary skills, and that's a big part of the book. And thank goodness Coach Charlie Winter uh, really hired me for my football knowledge and enthusiasm, not for my skills, in being a secretary. And that was something I had to learn. So as I went along and they saw that I already had basic knowledge and really good knowledge, plus Mike Holovac. Uh, who was the director of player personnel, uh, taught me a lot. And in my background, I had Walt Michaels, who was a former defensive coordinator of the New York Jets in the Super Bowl, taught me a lot growing up amongst other people. I think they saw that my, my knowledge was pretty great, and I had confidence in myself. Connie, did you feel pressure as the first woman in that role to succeed? Did you feel that, you know, knowing you were the only woman, how did that sort of impact you? I, was, I really was just thrilled. When they asked me, I felt... I didn't feel like they were just say, throwing me a bone. I, I honestly just, at that time, as I said, uh, Title IX was barely beginning, if there at all, and it wasn't, uh, there weren't big issues in the world about let's make women uh, do, say, so-called men's jobs or in a man's world. They really didn't even have women on the administrative side of football that much. That came later, and that came first, and now there's tons of women. So, no, I, I didn't really feel pressure. Um, I was just very, very excited. It was something that I felt confident in um, because this is the one thing I felt confident in. So it it really, um, I was ready to fly with it. We've talked a lot over the last few years about different roles that women have taken within the NFL, both in the front office and on the field. What do you think about the role women can play and have played in the NFL? Well, as, as I, since I was there, as I said, I've seen such growth on the non-football side, you know, the administrative side, all the way up to assistant Donna Ponte and other people through the assistant general managership uh, to women on the sidelines, announcers, you know, I mean, all, all those type of things that have grown. And now, now we're seeing more and more on the football side with the first female ref. Now you saw Jen Welter come in and you're seeing, you know, other people. Now I just got back from jet camp and Colette Smith is there as an intern uh, doing the coaching there with the, and helping the defensive backs. And they also, for the first time now in 40 years, they have three scouting interns. So I see that as a really, really big future, especially in the scouting world. Talking to Connie Carberg, she was the first female scout in the NFL. She has a book, X's and O's Don't Mean I Love You, available on Amazon, Kindle, iBooks, and Nook. Uh, she hopes to inspire young women everywhere so that everybody uh, can can understand that there's potential to work in the NFL. Uh, Connie, I wonder what it was like for you working for Lou Holtz. Uh, Coach Holtz was great. Uh, first of all, we had a bond because I had gone to Ohio State, the Ohio State University, and with Woody Hayes, and he worked for Coach Hayes. He was an uh, assistant coach with Woody. And so when he came to the Jets, I was already at the Jets. We bonded immediately over that, and he used to tell me funny stories about Coach Hayes, too, about how he, he, would, he would do something dumb, and then Coach Hayes would say, okay, 
you're fired. The next day, he'd say, nope, come on back. So we would laugh, and we would have a great time, but he thought the world of Coach Hayes, just the world of him, and so did I. So immediately, there was a bond there. So uh, that was wonderful with Coach Holtz. And through the years, I've stayed friends with him and his family, and he's been nothing but wonderful to me. Is there a moment that stands out to you from your career as just the highlight thus far? My standout, of course, was Mark Gastineau. Um, as I said, doing, doing the scouting, putting all the reports in like uh, as any of my male counterparts would do, grading films. Um, when we started before this, remember, there, was, there, was no, there were no computers. There was no pre-draft physical when I started. Um, it, was, it was just a, a lot of times the draft was in January and February. It was a very different world back then. But towards the end, um, when I got a new boss in 78, as Mike Holovac moved on to the Tennessee Titans, um, we had a thing with the Senior Bowl in 79, and Mike Stensrud got hurt on a motorcycle accident. And they needed to replace him because Walt Michaels, Coach Walt Michaels, was going to be the head coach of the Senior Bowl of the North Squad. And my boss then called and said to me at the desk, and uh, as I said, he was a new boss who didn't know me that well uh, compared to all the other people that I had grown up with. So I really had to prove myself there. And um, he said, I need you to find a replacement. So, again, it's not like now where you can just kind of poke things in into the computers and everything. And I looked at whatever films I had. Um, I narrowed it down to about five players plus all the scouting reports. And some of them were pretty similar. But there was one that was faster, much faster than the rest. But he was from a small school. Uh, Trying to make a decision, though, on these guys, I then decided to call them. Maybe this part or whatever of me. So I then called and uh, each guy was, was very nice, but some of them said, oh, I don't think I'm ready. I don't really know if I want to go. Uh, t- tell me about the Senior Bowl. Wh- when is it? What do I have to do? But then there was one person that I called, and uh, he said, I'm ready. Get me on the plane. Next plane. I'm in shape. I'm ready to play. This is a dream come true. I know I can do it. Okay, I looked up. That's Mark Astineau from East Central Oklahoma. He ran a four five five four six forty. And even though I said he went to a small school, we, um, I called my boss. I said, this is the one. I said, just listen to him. You know he's got a nonstop motor. This is the one I would recommend. Recommended him. He was then the most valuable player. They said he ate up everybody alive on the North Scott squad when he was defensive player. And uh, the rest is history. And um, he ended up holding the sack exchange record for so many years till it was broken by Michael Strahan. Very kind cool. of, we, we, you often hear the the common refrain of you know when, when we're talking about women in football, like, well, they didn't play the game. Whether you're talking about it, whether you're working in it, how did you attack scouting? How did you teach yourself to see the game? That's a, yeah. Well, when I was in middle school, I had a, a, a science teacher that I would. He went to the jet games with my family, and also after school, I would sit with him. He was a football coach. And he would teach me all as much as he possibly could and answer all my questions while I corrected papers for him. And so I started learning that way. Then Walt Michaels, coach, who was the head coach, of, he was the defensive coordinator of the Super Bowl and then eventually became the Jets head coach. He was a very close friend and he was always at the house and we would watch games and he would tell me what to look for, what to do. Then I also had Mike Holovac, who was a tremendous All-American from Boston College and he was my boss. And again, he shared so much knowledge with me through the years. And he had the most amazing drafts, if you look it up, of the Jets of 1976 and 77. So through all these gentlemen, plus Lou Holtz, I had great mentors. Well, it sounds like you did, because there's so many moments throughout your story where I feel like there would be more pushback and more people making it difficult for you, and you weren't, which is sort of why it's strange to see you know, so many years pass without a greater rise in the in the ranks of women. But as we mentioned before, there are some good signs in the last few years, and hopefully the, the numbers will continue to grow, especially with young girls potentially reading your book and believing it's possible. Thanks so much for making time for us, Connie. Oh, thanks. I, and that's what I'm hoping for. They all read it, plus they have the advantage of tackle and flag now, which never yeah. was before. So I think, I think, there's a, I think it's great. I think so many young girls have so much hope on the horizon. I think it's just wonderful. I agree. Thank you so much, Connie. Oh, and thanks for having me on. You've just been wonderful. Connie Carberg, the NFL's first female scout. You can find her book, X's and O's Don't Mean I Love You, on Amazon, Kindle, iBooks, and Nook.